Top Tip Tuesday time again with me, Bob, and in today's video, we're going to be taking a Nexus Dynamic Particle Sim, and I'm going to show you how we can use Redshift to farm some of that particle data to create some pretty cool rendering tricks. So, let's get started. In our scene, we've got this very basic particle setup going on. We've got a gravity and a turbulence giving us the particle motion. We've got an NX push, which means that when the particles collide, they push each other apart, so we get this nice effect. And they're dynamically scaling up and down using our NX scale, and they're moving from between 1 centimeter and 15 centimeters in radius, and that's giving us this nice look. In our emitter display tab, we're in spheres mode, we're colouring them via a gradient random, so every particle gets a random colour from somewhere on this gradient. OK, they're being rendered in our redshift view because on our emitter we've got this redshift object tag, and in the particles tab we've got that set to sphere instances. So let's have a look at some rendering tricks. We're going to go to our material manager, create materials, standard redshift material, and put this on our emitter. Then let's close that down. Uh, we'll open up the node editor. Okay, so what we're able to do is X particles particles contain loads of data which we can access in Redshift for different effects. We just need to know how to access it. So let's say that we want to color these spheres using the radius of the particle. Small particles should be a certain color, larger particles they should turn into a different color. How do we do it? Well, we're going to double click and we're going to go to our utilities and we're going to go to the user data nodes and in here there's one called scalar user data let's bring that into our scene and this is how we're going to access the particle data if we go over to the settings we don't know the attribute name but we can use the presets to find it preset particles and this is all the different channels of data we've got access to to use in rendering. Brilliant. So what did we say? We want to use the size of the particles to drive the effect. So let's click on size. And now if I hit solo, you'll see that we've got a little bit of data here. Look, yeah, look, the smaller particles are darker look, but it's very difficult to see. And the reason we haven't kind of got a usable range of color here is because we need to tell Redshift what's the smallest particle size and what's the biggest particle size and we do that um, by changing the range so let's double click type in range and we want to change the range let's bring that in we need to use our scalar data as the input let's solo this change range and now in the settings in the old min and max we need to put what the particle radius is so the minimum is one centimeter and the maximum is 15 and now we've done that yeah look the smallest ones are black largest ones are white perfect so now if we want to use this to color our particles we need to use this data as the starting point of a gradient so let's double click we're going to type in ramp bring in our ramp and what we want to do is feed in our change range as the starting point and there's no inputs so we drag it on top of the thumbnail and let go and then in the general input alt input that's what we want now this is hooked up to our ramp let's solo this because that, that's what we want to look at so in our ramp settings all we need to do is replace this default black and white ramp let's just do a preset this one Yes, and now it's working. Look, the smallest particles are this color on the ramp, largest particles are this color on the ramp, and they'll animate as they resize in our scene. Fantastic. So now we have that color data from the particles. All we need to do is feed it into our Redshift standard material. Let's put the output color into the base color of our material and yes look we've got it we've got our shiny material and we're getting the particle radius to drive the color and of course you can just change this at any point if we go and put in a different preset load that in and then we can get different looks so it's so versatile let me show you one more trick because we can use this change range data that we've got from the radius values for another rendering effect let's say that we want our largest particles to glow and emit light which can look pretty cool how do we do that well 
we're going to um, feed this data into a different type of ramp let's double click and type in ramp let's bring in a scalar ramp this time and this one we do the same trick we want this to be the starting point so let's drop it on and go to alt input and solo our scalar ramp so now with our scalar ramp we get this spline that we can make adjustments on I'm just gonna right click and do a linear spline and now look if I drag this we're gonna start crushing those blacks look excellent and we'll keep doing that until We've just got some of the larger ones. Only the largest ones are going to be emitting that light. That's looking pretty good. Something like that. Yeah, that's looking good. Okay. So how do we do this effect? Let's unsolo that. If we go to our Redshift Standard node, the light settings are in what's called emission. So if I put my weight up to two, they're now all emitting light. But if I can feed this black and white color information into the color of our emission we're going to get the look we want now i need to find the input to be able to do that and the quickest way we can create an input by holding control clicking this little button here look the input has appeared emission color so let's just feed this into our emission color excellent so now we've got our largest particles beginning to glow and then as they go smaller they'll stop glowing and as they get bigger they'll glow again and we get this really cool illuminating effect in our scene so that is just a couple of really simple but very powerful ways of getting particle data getting it into redshift getting redshift to be able to interpret that to drive some pretty cool rendering effects